Officially, hello everyone. Uh, we are super excited to have you today. Um, this is a Valo Internet webinar and we're very excited today to be able to discuss about how you can revolutionize your internet in Office 365 with the communication sites. Um, I'd like to maybe start by introducing myself and then I will introduce our amazing uh, guest today. So my name is Seb Sebastian Levaire. I am a product evangelist and partner manager uh, at Valo. And I have the uh, huge privilege today to have with us a uh, very good friend of us, uh, Mark. Hi, Mark. Hello and welcome. Hi, Seb. Thanks for having me on. And uh, also thanks for putting uh, such a wonderful image of me in that rare <laughs> Northwest day where the sun was shining, which I was very happy about and certainly thanks for the veil of love as well <laughs> You're welcome. It's always uh, Good to see people wearing our uh, swag. We love our swag. I actually love my uh, I wear right now my Valo love cap. So um, Thanks Mark uh, for being there with us today. Mark is a senior product manager in Microsoft and uh, is kind of the uh, the guy to talk to about communication sites, so it's gonna be it's gonna be a fun one Excellent. Yeah, there you'll see if you even peer behind the curtain, there are a ton of people uh, and I get to be the face, at least today for Microsoft to talk about communication sites, talk about the internet and obviously make that connection with how that additional value that both Microsoft and Valo bring to you when you think about structuring your internet. So very, very pleased to be here and th thank you very much for having me. You're welcome. So um, today the agenda will be fairly uh, simple. Um, we will just do a quick introduction on uh, what is Valo, what, uh, why are we hosting that webinar. Uh, then afterwards, we will move on what are the communication sites and what, uh, what is the value of the communication site? How can we uh, foster engagement with a uh, communication sites driven strategy to uh, really make sure that your people adopt your uh, internet and your communication strategy. Then we will um, um, share by the end of this uh, webinar, what is our strategy at Valo with uh, modern SharePoint and communication sites and all of that. So you will have the chance to be able to uh, have a couple of sneak peeks of what is coming at Valo. And then we will open uh, the Q&A by the end. So if you have any questions, please send them throughout the chat. Um, I will monitor uh, the questions. I will note them. And by the end of this uh, um, webinar, we will answer uh, as many uh, as we can today. So in a very uh, short time, um, what is Valo? Why, why should you care about a, a third-party intranet in a box solution? Well, it's because Valo is not only a good internet in a box, but it's also an award-winning solution that um, won a lot of prices around the, the quality and also the purpose of what Valo is serving to our customers. Uh, we have more than 300 customers, over uh, 700,000 users in uh, all across the world from uh, New Zealand to uh, um, Western America. So we really covered the entire uh, spectrum of countries in, in our wonderful world. And we really have three different specific offerings. The first one is the one that uh, will be the main focus today is called Valo Intranet. Valo Intranet is um, a prepackaged intranet with everything you would expect um, from an intranet perspective in terms of features, in terms of usability, in terms of branding, all packaged within a beautiful user experience. We also have our Valo Teamwork module, which helps you to find and manage your groups, your team site, and your collaboration tools directly from your intranet. So um, a, a great way to uh, re-leverage all the Office 365 groups feature that exists in Office 365. And finally, we also have an innovation platform called Valo Idea Management that is really there to collect and nurture ideas using gamification. So how can you collect the different ideas from people all around the world, especially now in a world where people are uh, working from home or for working remotely. This is that uh, last piece. But now, let me introduce you, uh, Mark Cashman. Mark Cashman, um, I will uh, give you the stage so you can probably take over for your presentation right now. And thanks for joining us today, guys. Thank you, Seb. I uh, just want to make sure that everybody can see and hear off of mute and sharing the screen. Seb, just making sure that that's all running, working. I'm good. Uh, if can, someone can maybe put in the chat that it, it's good, all good, you're good to go. 
All right, so let's spend a little time, just a little bit of framing around what are SharePoint communication sites, how do they fit into that portfolio of the intranet, and then dive into seeing them. Uh, I've got some nice couple of slides, a lot of time in, in demo, and I think you'll then see also uh, how that fits into the broader scope of um, where Valo will, will, will uh, share a lot at the end in terms of how we connect all the dots between uh, the out-of-box experience and then those extensions and, and uh, more valued experiences on top of the SharePoint intranet. Um, so again, my name is Mark Cashman. I'm a senior product manager on the SharePoint team here at Microsoft. Uh, pretty active on Twitter if you ever want to kind of keep up to date with what's going on in SharePoint around the intranet sites uh, and what we're doing and certainly what our partners are doing. Uh, pretty active and especially if you're interested in what we just launched, uh, take a peek at my feed and you'll see a little bit of what I'll tease out towards the end here and how it connects to communication sites. And that's information around what we call the SharePoint hub sites. Um, but to stay on track here in terms of uh, communication sites, uh, if you think about where we fit in, this is just going to ground kind of the where do communication sites come in within the broader portfolio when you invest with Microsoft. Uh, and not just Office 365, but potentially broader in what we call Microsoft 365. And this is a really holistic offering across Office 365, the Windows 10 desktop, and what you do around mobile security and security all up. Uh, building that in a way that both is good for end users, good for IT, and of course, a plethora of options and op opportunities for developers. And I think similar to what Seb will share afterwards, also for our partners in terms of how they can uh, add additional value and a, a broad spectrum of offerings. So today we're going to kind of narrow in this area of built for teamwork. But if you think about it, it's within that aspect of are you creating content? Is this uh, something that you want to share with a few people or a lot of people? And the way that these experiences aren't just a SKU that you buy off the shelf or a license that you get, but they're actually integrated experiences, uh, both in the web and mobile, always with security in mind uh, for everything up and down the stack, how you access uh, the data centers, <laughs> you know, good luck there, how you access through the browser, mobile, and of course the content and the data itself, keeping people and their content uh, very secure. Uh, if you dive down that sort of next level, what is this toolkit within Microsoft 365 that's focused on teamwork and productivity? You certainly start to break it into products at this level. Uh, there's another version of this that sort of looks at it from a scenarios perspective. But because we're focused a lot on what are communication sites today, We'll center around, of course, SharePoint in intranets and, of course, content management being a lot of what's inside an intranet is the content, news, pages, articles that people are writing and certainly lists and business applications that people are building. But it's within the context of if I want to share through Outlook, if I want to hold a conversation within teams of my inner loop or Yammer in the outer loop, or I'm authoring content, you should be able to do this a lot more seamlessly. We introduced a concept called Office 365 Groups which gives me basically an easy way to create a list of members of people who need consistent and common access across multiple applications, all of which are listed above. Um, they're tied together in an intelligent way so that you can, the service can be aware of who you work with and what you work on to your benefit alone so that that graph holds that, those details for you to more easily discover people and content through all of these applications. And again, if we didn't say it once or twice or three times by the end of the webinar, it's really easy to know uh, what you can do as an admin or on behalf of your company uh, to be more secure and compliant in the ways that you need to for your industry, for your region, sometimes per role, and know that there's a lot of things that we do by default, and there are, of course, a lot of things you can do proactively to further protect content that's even more sensitive. But we have this concept of inner loop, outer loop that really we think entails a lot of different scenarios. Uh, and I noticed one thing that's missing on the outer loop uh, is that one uh, element of text. But your inner loop are the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis on core projects. These, this is really collaboration. On the right-hand side, the outer loop is really when you're finished with your final product and you're ready to spread that news and information across the company. Uh, so that inner loop and outer loop certainly are uh, divided amongst our products, Microsoft Teams for Interloop, Yammer for the Outer Loop, and SharePoint is that consistent glue that helps provide content management and uh, very distinct sort of mini dashboard experiences like what I'm going to show you around communication sites.
to be able to then share and have those experiences either as a reference or embedded uh, is consistently what we're working on. And certainly through uh, email, it's always that ubiquitous way to target specific people, not always a whole group or a very broad uh, set of people. Uh, last two slides, getting in and then really diving into the demo is when you really start to break apart what SharePoint and OneDrive in this context do in the context of you being more productive through collaboration onto communication. Uh, it gives you a lot of capabilities to be able to share and work together. Obviously, when you turn to then inform people, that's where we'll spend the rest of the webinar on. Um, but it's also an area where you can uh, build your business processes. This is our uh, integration with Power Apps and Flow to be able to build things that you don't have to design and develop for months, but very quickly be able to build out mobile apps or web forms uh, to be able to collect information and push those through different workflows. And then our connection to have a more social intranet and a lot of where Valo has been spending time and uh, uh, using a lot of different parts and pieces is how does something like Yammer and SharePoint and some of those social capabilities blend together to collect information, to be able to share more broadly or ask somebody who you don't know but still get an answer because of that community aspect. Um, we always certainly are focused on uh, the management aspects and the control that IT can have. And of course, the extensibility capabilities moving into this more modern world, we want to make sure that developers can always uh, you know, at, uh, enhance the environment. And again, I think that's where Seb will spend a lot of time talking about how they build on top of using the SharePoint framework, but I'll, I'll let him go a little bit deeper there. So as this builds out, uh, final thing I just wanted to, before I show you in the demo, is we offer a lot of building blocks uh, that are out of the box, uh, it, it, for one way to say it. And I think a lot of what you'll then hear from Seb is on top of that toolkit or building blocks of the internet is where they then pile on and add value to, uh, sometimes a significant amount or a little amount per each site. It might be that one site or a portal is completely and more holistically volo, whereas maybe the breadth of the internet might be exactly what I'm going to show you, a little bit more out of the box or some things that maybe are owned by very small teams but equally as important but maybe they didn't go and, and uh, have budget for uh, significant work or um, you know some of those things that just they needed it in just a couple of days, they were able to do it themselves. Uh, so there's that mix of the internet where you think of team sites, communication sites, and custom uh, portals or portals that are a little bit more uh, involved with design and development. Those all come together to really connect the workplace and certainly all supported by SharePoint. Um, so I won't drain this slide completely, but hopefully you get a sense that everything that we do going forward, and I know everything that Valo does going forward, is really focused on being accessible through the web and mobile, uh, and hopefully you get a sense of that when we get through the demo. So let me jump out of slides, and I forgot to do one thing where I wanted to make it so that some of these uh, notifications won't pop up, and you'll see my cheat sheet here. So what you're looking at here is if I sign in to Office 365, and from Office 365, I went in and I clicked on SharePoint. And so what we call this is the SharePoint home in Office 365. And one way to think about this is it's a very personal place for me to come to read the news that's being aggregated for me based on sites that I'm active in or people that I work closely with, the news they're publishing in their sites. As long as I have access to view it or, or permissions to access the content, I will see it. I wouldn't see something that I don't have permissions to view. It also gives me a place, certainly as I scroll down, to see all of the sites that I frequent. So it's a great place for me to use as a launching pad to get to those frequent sites. But I also get a peek ahead of what are those activities, what are different people doing, and if I want to hover over somebody, and this is not unique just to the SharePoint home, but it's really our people experiences throughout Office 365, is I can jump in and find out a lot of information about somebody. So here I'm looking at Andy. With Andy, I can learn uh, more about him, uh, who he works for, uh, what he's working on. And when you get to something like the files, if I click into files here, after you can see he, who he reports to, who he works with, uh, one note here, and I'll say it a couple of times, this is all being pulled because of the Microsoft graph. So not only do I get hierarchy, like I would get from Active Directory, I also get the value of seeing, well, who does Andy work with? It's not always who does he report to or who reports under him. 
But if I go to files, I get that same view of what is he working on. And again, the caveat here is I won't see anything that he's working on that I don't have access to view or he doesn't want me to view. But I'm seeing this piece of content because it's in a shared environment here in the Contoso Adventure Travel Program, which we both belong to. And if you go to something like Travel Accessories, we both have the same member permissions to that site where this content is stored. So that's pretty critical in how we build out the experiences. And the other thing that you'll notice is when things uh, are something that you go to edit, something you want to look into more deeply, a lot of that experience we want to keep you where you're working. So like that pop-up or that some of these editing panes that you will see, we really keep it in the context with the site, not launch you off into another site altogether. Last thing you'll see here are the featured links, which is then when we're going to go into uh, if we've created something that's intended for the whole company. Say we created a communication site for uh, HR training, welcome to Contoso, just like you see this one here. We can actually build that into the featured links where people will be able to, everybody in the company will see these links, especially something like a communication site that's meant to be for everybody. And uh, when it's here, it also will show up on the SharePoint mobile app. Uh, so that everybody will have these links at their fingertips even when they're on the go and they're taking their intranet in their pocket. Um, but then where do we go from here? This is sort of my starting point of all things SharePoint that are related to me. Uh, from here, I want to show you how easy it is to create a communication site, which is really the topic of the day. So uh, as I go through this, I'm going to use a little bit of the language that you see here so that it helps understand, well, what is a communication site? Um, on the left-hand side is if I wanted to create a team site, this is a group connected team site, something that's probably for a one to few people working together on a project or uh, working on a proposal for a client. And this is where they get their job done, but they don't necessarily want everybody to see everything they're doing there. But in a communication site, the intent is to build out a site that looks beautiful, uh, is created in seconds, and then you just layer in your content. Um, so I'm gonna do that. So this is intended to then share more broadly. Uh, you'll see here that we've got a couple of site designs. If you were a SharePoint uh, person from the past, this would certainly be the same as if, if you had created a site template. And you'll see we've got three that ship out of the box, topic, showcase, and my favorite, which is blank. So if anybody ever gives you a blank stare, know that they're probably a SharePoint customer and they just created a blank communication site. And so they're just starting fresh. It doesn't mean that they uh, don't know what's going on. It means they have the world at their fingertips. So I love blank. But I also want to focus here that we support custom site designs. So this one here is the Contoso department site, which of course is a custom design. And it has already a look and feel. It's got a configuration of page layout and whatnot. And so I'm going to go and just create this really quickly. So we'll call this the Velo example. I've already got one that I'm going to turn to. But so you can see how fast it is to create a communication site in Office 365. I'm going to just make one more choice. This is meant to be more broad but you can see that we can even classify the site, which then will of course take on those, those the, the kind of level of instruction from your admin and what's allowed and what's not allowed. But I'll choose general purpose, which means it's available for everybody in the company. And when I click finish, you can see that it's creating the site and count in your head, hopefully under five is what we're targeting, but sometimes under 10 seconds. And there you go. You launch on a new communication site with a layout and design that's sort of prefabricated for you, but of course you can change it. I'll show you that next. And what's running on the right-hand side is what we call site scripting, because this is a custom site design. It's going to say, yes, they want a communication site, and then we want to do these things to it each time somebody creates a, a, a communication site. So you can see the list of activities and actions that we took right here uh, that, that are taking effect. Hello, hello. Sorry about that. Uh, my my uh, mute, it just went on mute there for a second. I, I'm, I was starting to be worried, Mark. No, I, <laughs> I, I, I just looked up and when I hovered over, all of a sudden I was on mute and I, I'm not quite sure what happened there. No worries. Uh, but anyway, on the right hand side, you can see all the actions that happened after the site was provisioned. And that's something that you can easily build in. And you can also run that same capability even after the fact. If you've been using a site for a month or two, uh, and you want to change something and you want to do it a little bit more uh, conform to the now the new look and feel of each communication site, 
determined by your, your group or your IT, you can easily run these actions after the site's been around for a while as well. But we've added a few things to the navigation. We've adjusted a list and added some columns. A lot of those things you would expect. Um, so when I click to view the updated site, all that's now intact. And again, it's just a starting point. Um, but you'll see here a lot of the new stuff that shows up. Um, that's based on that site scripting that gives me really a better head start to get started. But of course I can go in and I can adjust my navigation. I can add pages and news. I can go in and of course adjust the layout, which is what I'm going to show you next. But that's kind of the getting started. It's really easy to create a communication site. You can have custom site designs and site scripts that run to help you do more programmatically and keep them similar across every communication site that's created. It also applies to team sites, not to uh, not call out the applicability, but with where we're sitting today, uh, let's focus on what is uh, more that you can do with the communication site. So Seb, I hope you're okay that I stole a few graphics from your site. Absolutely. And what we're looking at here is the scenario around uh, wanting to share something internally. So imagine Seb and his team are building out what is the Velo life? And I get to learn about this every time I meet, so the Velo life sounds pretty good. So um, I started to create a site here, and, and just to be very fair, I, I certainly uh, didn't go into too much depth, but I did change some things. And you'll see it change a little bit more as I add and adjust this homepage, and then I move in to add it to a hub site, and I'll talk about that and what that means in just a second. But what you're looking at here is a communication site that I've adjusted the theme on. I've adjusted the top level navigation to point to some resources that are appropriate for learning more about the Velo life. And we've got two hero elements that we highlight here about getting started fast at Velo and then certainly making Velo your own, choosing your style and personalizing the experience of being a Velo uh, employee. And again, if I'm off on any of what makes Velo life Velo life, Seb will jump in and, and tell us more about it. Um, but as I scroll down, you'll see it's, it's still relatively, you know, a fresh site that I haven't done a lot with. So I'm going to put it into edit mode. And then once I've done this, I'm going to scroll down just below uh, the last element here and start to add some things. So the first thing I'm going to add is a new section. And this is going to be a two-column layout. And then I'm going to bring up my little cheat sheet so I can do a few things a little bit faster. Um, but what I first want to do is put a map to where people, uh, you know, certainly might be. Uh, so if I go to Bing and I type in in the toolbox to find the Bing Maps web part, I'm going to add one map and I'll program that to where Seb is, I think, now. Are you in Montreal today? I am absolutely in Montreal today. All right. So we'll Montreal offices. And then on the other side here, I'm going to add another map. So again, I'm going to do a search. This time I'm going to expand just to show you kind of the breadth of web parts that are available. And even in the web part toolbox, it inherits the theme of, so I'm going to type in Bing again. And this time I'm going to type in where their parent company is. Hopefully I spell it right. Helsinki. Absolutely. Yep. Helsinki <laughs> is our, uh, kind of our HQ. Yeah, we'll call it HQ. So real quickly, I added a couple of maps. So I'm going to just keep scrolling. I'm going to keep adding some things. Next thing I wanted to do is to add a three-column layout. And here I'm going to use the new Twitter web part three times. And you'll see why. So I'll type in Twitter. And we're going to plug in on the right-hand side, first, Velo Intranet. And you can see it quickly picks up the Twitter feed, and there's Velo. I can choose a number of different things. I can limit the depth so it doesn't go all the way down the page. And, of course, I can change the theme that I get from Twitter, dark to light, those kind of things. So let me bring in and do these just a little bit more quickly. Twitter again. This time we're going to program it with Sebastian, see what Sebastian's been talking about. And, again, if I get the name... Hopefully I typed it right. Let's see. There's Sebastian's feed. And then one more Twitter. And there's this little thing that we're working on that I'll give a little plug here. 
called SPC Conf. And that's the SharePoint conference that we've got coming up. But you can start to see I'm starting to add content for other people to then experience. And it's all dynamic and interactive because we're obviously pulling from external services. Two extremes here coming from Bing Maps and Twitter. But down below, I want to put in some things that are, oh, look, I didn't even see that that was coming through. That was unintentional, by the way. I'm not trying to plug myself even more, but in case you're curious who's talking, it's that <laughs> right there. Um, so let's add a, now a two-column layout and add two more components that are pretty common for something like a communication site uh, or something if you were to make your communication site a hub site. Now, I keep teasing that one. That will make sense here in just a second. But I'm going to use the Yammer web part. And I'll drop that on the page and steal from my cheat sheet over here. The Yammer group that I want to plug in is actually the group for HR. So if people have questions about Velo Life, they can, they can help answer that. Uh, let's see why that's not loading. Should be. It's trying. I'm going to go into the latest conversations to see if it likes that. Maybe switch over to I think actually, Mark, now you can type ahead. So if you have the name of the group, you can put it in there and it's going to unlock Yeah, oh, that's, I think you're right. Let me try the, just the number. All right, we'll do HR. Boy. It's, it's one of those days. Yeah, yeah. Well, let's <laughs> close out of that and we'll try it again. We'll add the group. I always try it twice, right? Oh, I remembered what I had in there. Okay. Because I'm a little stubborn. We'll drop in anything. I know another group that at least might be in there. But we'll start with a fresh instance. Pull in Yammer. HR. There we go. There we go. All right. So it does work. Human resources. And then you can choose the kind of the layout that you want. Do you see top conversations, latest conversations, or specific ones that I choose? I'm just going to, because I messed up there a couple of times, leave it as it is. And then the last thing I want to bring in here is a video coming from Stream. So if I type in Stream, Stream is our enterprise video solution that's taking over where Office 365 video started. And I've got a town hall meeting that I'm going to bring here that's kind of like that welcome video that you might add to uh, a site like this. So this one I can program to view the whole video. I could also bring in a whole set of videos from a particular channel. And I can even choose where I want the video to start at. This one is about 15 minutes long. You can see here, if I wanted to highlight a certain part of the video, I could do that. So without any further delay, I'm going to put this into publish. And then just kind of walk the page so you can see with the, just a couple of seconds and, of course, the idea of the content that I wanted. I've now started to build out a fairly interactive, content-rich landing page for Velo Life. So people can see where the offices are. They can read the activity that's important coming from Valo and one of their most uh, active members on Twitter, Sebastian Levert, also <laughs> famous Microsoft MVP. Um, and of course, the SharePoint conference, some of the things we've been doing. But as we get down here, last thing I want to show you here before I show you a couple of examples of other sites, just to give you a sense of what other things you can build, uh, is something like Stream. It's a great service. Not only is it a nice integration with SharePoint, but it's got some richness where once people know a little bit about how this works, uh, you know, you certainly uh, can, can do that. So I'm going to pause this just for my own ears. And this video obviously is being plumbed through the service. I'm experiencing it here in the context of the site. I could have added a little paragraph of text of where this was from. But I can also do some pretty rich interactions. So if I wanted to, somebody said, oh, at the latest uh, town hall, they were actually talking about our, our bonuses. So I'm going to type in bonus. I'm going to hit return. And then you'll see it actually finds where in the transcript that was auto-generated by the service, they talk about cash bonuses. I'll click on it, and you'll see it jumps to right that point in time. So a really nice feature, obviously, coming from Microsoft Stream, but it also shows you the value and power of how we build web parts and how we enable third parties or even our own customers to build their own web parts and especially have it be a rich, interactive experience that's great on the web and certainly looks great on mobile, too. 
So uh, I want to show you then what that looks like on mobile, kind of in a cheat way just because of the time that we have. But if you can see how it reflows, and then again, I'll walk it up where things stack one-on-one, uh, -on -one, and certainly you're getting a sense of if I were looking at it on a mobile device, but it looks really nice um, when you scrunch it down, and certainly if you were on a tablet, you might get a little bit more space, and then if I you know, were on a Surface Hub and lucky enough to have an 85-inch monitor, it would look great there as well because of the responsive design that we build in. So I'm going to do one thing and move this so it's not just a siloed site of its own. I'm actually going to add this Velo Life into a hub site. And the hub site that I have that I'm going to join is actually a hub site specific for people, you know, the HR department owns this hub site. So I'll explain what a hub site is once we land there. But as a site owner that's been given permissions to join a variety of hubs, these are only the ones that I can join, I'm going to take this communication site and put it in with a family of sites that it belongs to with the intent of having greater visibility across all those sites. So now communication sites and team sites can be associated underneath a hub site. So I'm going to join this one. It's called Work at Contoso. And I'll sort of just kind of keep an eye out of what happens when I join. You'll see something pretty visual. And of course, something new will appear. And I'll explain that when it happens. So I'll click Work at Contoso. Click Save. And hopefully with our fingers crossed, better than the Yammer web part, we will see some magic happen here. So the site content stays the same. Everything I just added to the page doesn't adjust. I'll scroll down so you can see. Here's everything that's still what we just loaded, and it's just kind of doing a free, fresh uh, fetch from the web. But you see that the theme changed. So we went from that dark theme to a light theme with the little purple uh, highlights. This Velo Life communication site is now a part of uh, the Work at Contoso hub site. And the hub site does a couple of things. It gives us this top navigation so I can navigate across a number of sites. If this Velo Life site was important enough, I could add it up here into the uh, top level navigation. But where I'm at still is I'm on the communication site itself. Now, when I click onto the Work at Contoso hub, this is actually going to take me up a level now from the Velo Life communication site to the Work at Contoso hub site which is just a broader level of a set of sites that have been bound together through that top level navigation. They share a common theme, they get a scope searching, so that now if I perform a search from the hub, I'll search for content both from the hub itself and sites like Velo Life that are now associated to this site. The other thing you see here is we're getting news roll up. So if we had created news specifically to Velo Life, you would see that at the time when you publish it, It'll be available on the Velo Life site, and it'll also roll up into this HR news roll up for the news that's coming across a variety of sites, like the Live at Contoso site. This one was something that was published at the hub itself. And then you get something like Give It Contoso. This is a separate site where other people are publishing news. And my view here is just seeing news that I have access to. But assuming something like this, it's ubiquitous access because it's something as broad and being created by the HR team. So this is a hub, uh, and certainly there are a variety of sites that are underneath this hub, one of which I'm going to click to. It's just open here on a different tab, which is yet another look and feel for a communication site. So this we call Live at Contoso, or if I had adjusted this early enough, I would have said Live at Velo, um, that similar scenario. But you can see it's using a little bit of a different layout with the hero web part that we have. And as I scroll down, there's maybe some important documents using the highlighted content web part filtered down just to show only a, sec a specific set of PowerPoints for people to be able to access. But then you see video images and different things that certainly bubble up. Um, so this is another look and feel for a communication site. It's got its own structure, most likely managed by another uh, set of people. So you'll have this uh, kind of intranet management across the different sites, and maybe there's a unique person who owns the hub and you get to design that for your own information architecture. Um, but that's in, that was mainly what I wanted to get across in demo. Um, I'm going to go for just one more slide and then hand it back to Seb uh, just to walk through a little bit uh, around what we've got coming up. Just one quick plug, Seb, if you don't mind. Um, and important on today's topic is the next level of details that we'll disclose around communication sites, the next level of investments around what we're doing for 
uh, richer content management service and system type capabilities is something that we'll certainly talk about in Vegas coming up in May, May 21st to the 23rd at the SharePoint Conference North America. Um, here's the URL if you want to go learn more. Would love it if you register and join us in person, get a deep dive. You'll have folks like Seb on site, uh, both in the expo and, and driving sessions himself to really get best practices. You'll get some announcements from Microsoft, best practices across a whole spectrum of SharePoint. Um, but certainly specific to today's topic, we've got a lot to share around what's next for communication sites, what's next for hub sites, and of course everything else that we talked about, some investments we're making at the SharePoint Home, SharePoint Mobile App, everything to help you build out a more robust intranet. And hopefully, I'll stop talking and that's the foundation for where Seb will take us to talk about that additional value that Velo adds into that portfolio of building blocks for your internet. So Seb, over to you. Thank you so much, Mark. Um, and yes, uh, Valo, not only uh, Valo will, uh, I will be there, but Valo will be there as a uh, sponsor also of uh, the uh, SharePoint Conference North America. We'll also be speaking, uh, some other members of the team, including Vlad Katrinescu will also be speaking. So we're really, really looking forward to, uh, to this. Um, I see um, a ton of questions on the on the chat. Um, I think I want maybe to answer them right now uh, instead of going right now in the modern SharePoint. I know that I don't think it's going to take too long. I just want to make sure that we cover this topic right now. So one of the question uh, we had um, was: um, Is it planned to have more than one connection to a hub site, connect to multiple hub sites, like to see the content from a site to be rolled up inside multiple uh, aggregates of content? Yeah, it's a good question. You know, there's a couple of ways to think about it, depending on the scenario that you want to set up. Um, the important thing, at least at the stage that we're at now, is one site can only join uh, under one hub, but a hub can, of course, be a collection of multiple sites. So if you think about, I can't join one site to multiple hubs. That being said, you can certainly use things like search-driven experiences. So we've got a new highlighted content web part Certainly, if you were to design a page around a search query web part or build an application, you know, uh, as you would be able to today, to aggregate content in a smart way, uh, again, using search or if, uh, in a more advanced way, using the graph, which kind of uses the, the benefits of the relevancy to the person who signed in, and then based on who they know, what they're working on, and then what does the search index tell you. So there's a lot of unique ways that you can design experiences. What I showed you out of the box is kind of what you get for free. If you go to the hub level, news will roll up, site activities will roll up, access to the sites themselves and the search scoping all happen by default. But if you want to add additional value by using some of those search web parts or if at some point in, in uh, the stage where we need to be able to share more uh, concretely or in a more programmatic way, uh, we're definitely always open to the feedback of what makes sense for how you want to use hub sites going forward. So we're just getting started. Our ears are open, um, but hopefully it gives you a sense of what you can do today and, and maybe some of the things at least to be aware of in how it's designed uh, in this V1 mode. Awesome. Um, and maybe one more before we uh, move on. The other questions, um, I will tackle them through the rest of this uh, session, so I will really try to incorporate them. Um, is it live? Can we use the hub site today? Yeah, so hub sites literally started to roll out to targeted release customers yesterday. Um, I'll put into the chat once Seb gets started a couple of links if you want to go read more about hub sites. Um, but I just published a blog yesterday, and the engineering team started to crank up uh, the capability into the service. And just to give you a sense on how that works, uh, we release uh, you know, in a cadence by nature of us being able to listen as we start to release. So we go into targeted release at 10%. 50% and 100%. And that usually takes about one to two weeks. So even if you're in targeted release today, uh, you may not yet see it. Um, and the way you would see it is you, you run a PowerShell command to take an existing site or maybe you create a new site, like a communication site, and you give it hub capabilities by running a PowerShell command called register-spo hub site. Um, but if you try that today, but you're not yet fully uh, on the current release of hub sites in, in full, the second component is once you run that PowerShell command, everything I showed you in the demo then shows up to the user experience. If you're not yet enabled, even though you can run the PowerShell command, you may not see the actions or the effect of running that PowerShell command. But in due time, really within a week or two, 
everybody in targeted release will be able to do exactly that. Great documentation out there. I'll also put those links in. Uh, but absolutely, we're starting to release them. Once we get beyond targeted release, a number of weeks later, it'll be in full 100% production, and uh, we'll be pumping out a lot of, a lot of uh, guidance. Uh, we've got a new uh, planning guide that's coming soon. Uh, so definitely, we're just getting started on releasing them, but don't expect that to take too long. We're, we're going to move pretty aggressively on this one. That is awesome. And we're super excited about that at Valo because we want to leverage those subsites inside our solution. But then what is our story around uh, Valo and Modern SharePoint? Um, earlier, um, Mark, you, uh, you described the, like the extensibility model and how the third party, all the ISVs can actually jump in and really get the value of the communication side, but within their own uh, solutions and how we can kind of build the best of uh, both worlds using the out-of-the-box capabilities of SharePoint. So um, at Valo, um, we uh, decided to not only uh, move all into uh, modern, not modern, but we mainly decided to go all in uh, uh, with, uh, with SharePoint. So we went all in with SharePoint. We decided that uh, we want to leverage everything that is available out there from the very, very information architecture concepts like columns and content types, the very, very modern concepts like hub sites. We really have um, uh, taken care of everything in there. And then we uh, built our solution on top of pretty much anything that you would expect. Is it publishing sites or classic publishing sites, but also from team sites, communication sites, and now today, hub sites. So everything is in there. Um, and I saw a couple of um, um, questions earlier um, about uh, those, like those next steps. So Microsoft is really building an amazing foundation for um, a software like Valo. And then we take that and really uh, go in more um, uh, deep inside some of those aspects. For instance, the full uh, branded experience, uh, Microsoft built an amazing way of theming a, a site. Now we take full advantage of that branded experience. Bring a, an information architecture that is fully industry specific. You're in automotive, we know how to build and how to structure an intranet. Um, page and site templates. I, I saw a question uh, earlier on uh, can we have uh, pages and site templates? For now, we have site designs. Um, and we also have uh, what we could call like, I don't know, ready to go pages in communication sites. Uh, but we're really pushing that further using the APIs of Microsoft to really give you the full page and site templates that you would expect from a uh, modern internet perspective. We also bring not only a hub site navigation, but a global navigation that will run across all of your hub sites to really bring that um, top level site that will leverage all of the hub sites that are uh, mostly department related or uh, work related or task related. Content categorization, how to tag content, how to be able to subscribe to content, to be able to be informed about the topics that you really care about. Um, also content targeting. We want that person in that group of persons to see that news because it is relevant. We want to make sure that everything is relevant to the people. Um, so content targeting is for us at Valo, not only a, an important uh, feature, but an important value proposition. Um, global content roll-up, so roll-up uh, content from all over the place, from all the different websites in this single view where you can have um, an overview of everything that is happening. And when you want to see something more, then you can jump inside a hub site. Uh, multilingual content, that is something that we do support in Valo. We think is super important. Um, we live, especially uh, for us at Valo, we live in a very multicultural and multi-country and multilingual environment. So it's really important for us to do that. Um, a branded mobile application. Uh, I love the SharePoint app. By the way, Mark, I really, really love the SharePoint app. I, I use it every single day to get to my documents and everything. Um, at Valo, we really, really uh, use the same mechanism that the SharePoint app is doing to make sure that we have a nice responsive UI, a nice uh, responsive way, but also a nice native way to, to communicate and get the, that global content roll up directly inside your, uh, your pocket, which is very cool. And what we love about being sitting on top of SharePoint is that we can uh, integrate with all the Office 365 features. 
from Stream to Yammer to the Microsoft Graph to get relevancy on documents, to know who you're working with, uh, and also to get content inside SharePoint. So really, really, really liking that. Um, at Valo, we also have something called a fresh subscription that makes you always updated with what Microsoft is shipping. So for instance, now Microsoft is shipping the hub sites, well, we will support the hub sites in our, in our next version. So you don't have to wait or build your own solution on top of us. You can really just leverage what is already out there. And a ton of more features from alerts to FAQs to search-driven experiences to analytics to um, uh, event management and event planning. Everything is available inside that type of uh, solution. So I'd like maybe to give you one or two um, um, quick views on what is um, currently uh, a Valo site. So now you have uh, that Valo experience that is um, uh, using uh, our industry-specific information architecture, and we really try to make it as beautiful as possible, very, very targeted to the user. Everything is tailored to its own needs and its own case, and we really integrate with all of the different Office 365 services. So we, everything around branding, the company brand, everything is all available in there. But we also have multiple ways of showing the data. So now we even have here a sneak preview of our next release that will come out next week that leverages all that modern aspect to showcase amazing UI um, using uh, SharePoint. So here you have our, our global navigation that is right there on top, our search capabilities, but also a huge hero web part that shows you all your latest news um, tailored to you, targeted to you. So it is really, really a great experience uh, that we have, and we always try to integrate as, um, as many Office 365 environments in there. We also, being in a multilingual environment, we also uh, have a world clock feature where you can actually see what time is it. Uh, for us, it becomes a, quite of a challenge. Uh, people in Belgium, in Sweden, in, in, uh, in the US, here in Canada, in Finland, uh, last week people were in, in Australia. It's hard for us to keep up, so this is a very useful feature. Um, and we also have, um, our modern story, our real modern story around the modern SharePoint and SharePoint framework, which enables us to connect to Office 365 groups and teams and planner and all of those, which are um, a great opportunity for us to leverage all the bits and pieces that are shipped by the communication site. So here you have our uh, Hubstranet, which is our uh, intranet um, uh, sample version with uh, uh, all of our uh, mega menu in there that uh, lay out all the content from all the hub sites, all the different sites, search experience, but also a group experience to get productive, to be able to work every single day. Um, and then we also have our version of Valo that sits entirely on top of the communication sites. Um, and we're very, very proud of what we achieved uh, with this one. So here is, we're leveraging everything you can see of Office 365 of SharePoint Online, all the capabilities. We're also leveraging some out-of-the-box features of the communication sites, like the layouts, the way the web parts are being placed, the way people um, can get notified from content in there. And here it's really how we leverage uh, the, the, the functionality that are being made available to the user. So leveraging stream, leveraging events, also leveraging Delve and the Office 365 blogging system to really uh, not only put your users in front, uh, but putting your users at the center of the experience. Um, so for us, it is a, um, a great solution that we decided to move uh, with. Not only we decided to uh, uh, jump on board and do all of our web parts, uh, all of our um, extensions using the SharePoint framework, but we decided to go all in with everything that Microsoft is shipping because we really, really believe that this is the way to go. Um, and this is really leveraging all the innovation that Microsoft is pushing. So that's really a great experience that you get with Valo. Even if you're on classic mode, even if you're in modern mode, you will always get the best of both worlds using uh, the Valo intranet. We talked earlier about modern, uh, about mobile. We also have a fully mobile solution, and here it's done entirely using the modern um, capabilities of SharePoint. We integrate natively with the Pages framework and the web part framework to be able to have kind of a uh, nice um, uh, approach to uh, mobile. So here you have uh, your latest news that are tailored to you um, uh, based by metadata, so you can actually see what's the topic of a news. 
who is being targeted by the news, and then you have a nice effect when you scroll through the, through the news um, to be able to interact, like, comment, or directly in, in the app. And when you click on that, what's happening? Well, we see the SharePoint page, the SharePoint news. So your users, they only have to create one type of content at a time, which is in SharePoint, and then everything is start being populated uh, automatically. So this is really where Val decided to take uh, this modern story and bring it that um, really to be tailored to an organization internet, like the full digital workplace, to be the front door to your digital workplace. That's really what um, Valo is all about. So, Mark, I said that you might have uh, asked, uh, answer a couple of questions. Um, we still have um, a couple of questions waiting on my end. Is there anything that you uh, can see on your end, actually? I Probably not. Yeah, there, there was a couple of questions I was answering and, and posting a few things. If you aren't looking at the chat, um, there are certainly some things I've been putting into the chat to address a couple of questions that came through there. Excellent. And there was one that I was just about to get to uh, that was asking about um, how can the news roll up at the hub site level identify news articles by content type? So if we have existing news articles, those list items must inherit a certain content type. So. First way I would answer that is when you create a news article, certainly to the service, it is a special page type. And we just think of it as it's a news article. And what happens with news articles is after they're published, they flow into that site level news web part. And it also then sends a signal to go to people that you're related to, to go to their SharePoint home. So you get that news aggregation in the SharePoint home. And it also goes into the SharePoint mobile app, like Seb was talking about, a news article would then appear in the news tab, again, aggregating across the sites that you're active in or closely related to people that are publishing news. Um, so we certainly identify it as a, a new content type. There's a new feature that we've recently re released. So if you had created a page and you want to increase the visibility or, or the urgency of getting people uh, aware and you want to do some things without just sending links to everybody, you can actually convert a page into a news article, which really doesn't do anything on the site itself. It'll add it to the news web part, and it'll send it out to those distribution points, the SharePoint Home and the SharePoint mobile app, where people will get notified and, again, kind of read their news in their pocket when they're on the go. Uh, so there are definitely ways uh, that we treat those pages and stamp them specifically, especially when you promote a page to a news article, a lot will then happen. Um, what we then do at the hub level, because now we've got different content types and a number of different web parts that can help you uh, highlight different types of content, the news web part is programmed really only to show news. And the news web part, if you choose the new hub layout, is going to do one main thing beyond just show you news, but it's going to show you news from all of the associated uh, sites. And it'll roll them up and display them at the hub level but it's only gonna show you things that are news. So go back to that example where maybe started something as a page in one of the associated sites, I promote it as news, it would then flow through that news service and increase the visibility of the news on the site itself, at the hub level in the news roll up, and then out to those distribution points. So the intent of the news service is, I have something that is either timely or it's important that more people see it. And of course it's a distinct um, content type really to answer your question, but hopefully it gives you a, a little bit of a longer answer of how it works and how the news web part uh, works to showcase news. Last thing I would say is if you use something like the highlighted content web part, that can in quotes roll up news if I filter down to show only the content type of news, which is a choice in the highlighted content web part, but it's doing it by search. Uh, so you're basically saying I want to see a certain set of things either by this keyword or content type or some combination of the two. Um, but if I did that, I could certainly kind of recreate the news web part for the news content type, but I wouldn't need to if I use the web, uh, the news web part. Hopefully that gives you an idea. So thank, thank you for that question. Um, a good question that came in, uh, will the Office Admin Center be updated to include which sites are attached to a specific upsites? Like to be able to uh, kind of keep an eye on uh, what is happening, who's connected to my, to my hub, for instance. Yeah, great question, uh, especially for anybody who's thinking, how do I administer all this stuff that's getting created? Certainly you should you know, think in terms of that planning and strategy of how you want to structure your sites and 
the ways of doing it now is easier to manage and do it programmatically. Even when a site gets created, you can run something that says, now this site is created associated to this particular hub. You can program a lot of those things in. But to get visibility on it, we've just recently updated the SharePoint Admin Center in Office 365 to do one main thing outside of it just becoming a much richer experience for a lot of different use cases for IT. But one of them is just that visibility. So now, if I go to the SharePoint Admin Center in Office 365, I can see group connected sites, not just classic sites. I can see my communication sites. I can, of course, filter and do some uh, reporting on them. <clears throat> and certainly with hub sites being a new content, a new site type in quotes because it really is a superset added to either a team site or a communication site. You, you can really, when you create a hub site, you are effectively are, you have an existing communication site or you create a new communication site like, like you saw me do earlier. And then you run that PowerShell script that gives it those hub capabilities. And once you do that, certainly then it is a hub site and we want to give you that visibility. That, that's something that will come in a little bit in the future. And if you, if you know about the current updated SharePoint Admin Center in Office 365, you know that you can pivot on uh, template types. And the main ones are communication template, team site template, uh, project template, you know, the ones that have existed in the past. And soon you would see then that ability to filter in on just hub sites. So you can go find all the hub sites and maybe send an email to all hub site owners and communicate with them that way. There's lots that you can do once you pivot uh, in the SharePoint Admin Center, because at the end of the day, the, the other big sort of underlying update to the SharePoint Admin Center is it's actually driven by a list when you go to the sites page. It's a real SharePoint list, so we can do real listy things with uh, lists of sites and site types uh, that give the admins a little bit more flexibility in, in how they can manage and, and reach out to people. I like your listy things. Um, um, uh, one more before we, uh, we end, and actually I think um, that's a, a great way to uh, kind of mix the communication sites and the hub sites. Uh, there's something that seems to, I, I wouldn't say go away, but uh, seems less popular today, and it's uh, all about information architecture and sub sites. Um, could we say today that the hub sites are a way to organize site collections in a way we're organizing sites at the time? You know, I, I, you cut out just about midway through, and we've been so clear up in this point. I just missed the context of the question. It's okay. So the the, the question was all about uh, um, hub sites and communication sites today. Yep. Yep. It seems like um, it's it's uh, not a popular thing to create a subsite nowadays. Oh yeah, um, sure. um, is the hub sites the new way of organizing? Um, some kind of a hierarchy are, are sites to make sense of a theme or of a, of a division or a department? Yeah, I, I think it's great. And there, there are two other questions that I saw that I'll, I'll kind of flow in and hopefully answer them as well because I think they're connected. Um, so certainly if you think about the world is flat, you know, there are some of our uh, MVPs like Seb and uh, people like Sue Hanley that are starting to interpret really what we're designing and, and we're working together to better understand how can we be clear in, in our messaging. And of course, we want the user experience to be consistent. Um, but hub sites certainly are something that people have created in the past. And those are not necessarily something that we carry forward in a significant way. Not to say that anything happens to your sub sites, but we do encourage people to create more of a site collection rather than a sub site in terms of the, usually when somebody creates a sub site, they have distinct permissions in mind, they have distinct content, and of course they want it to look or feel in a distinct way. Sometimes that's not always the case. And in the world today, that's just an additional site collection that, you, like you saw, I can create in seconds, I can create the list of members who have access to that, and I can change that over time and manage it myself without inheriting some of the permissions uh, uh, challenges if I do something within the same site and change it at the subsite level. Um, that being said, with hub sites, what it brings is it gives you a more parent level thing to be able to join things together, but in a more loosely coupled way. So it's not the, the site collection, a subsite within a site collection. It's multiple site collections that are organized in a way uh, by associating to the hub with a couple of clicks and a couple of seconds. You can associate, you can do the same thing where you disassociate and move things around as the business changes without getting into some of those kind of challenges with permissions or exposure of certain content when you didn't intend to if something changed or got moved. 
Uh, so we, we feel a lot of value in, in up-leveling it to the hub site, uh, establishing more site collections, which really to the end users, I want to create a team site. I want to create a communication site. Those effectively are site collections, but they really, uh, everything you do on them is designed around just that parent level site of the site collection, which again, at the end of the day, is just the site itself. So uh, we are certainly moving away from uh, the emphasis of subsites. If you have them and you modernize a classic site or you leverage that same technology as you go forward, that's certainly okay. We just haven't quite caught up with fully modernizing when you create a subsite to have that modern look and feel. Um, the other thing that I was just gonna throw in there to kind of answer one of the other questions here uh, is can you link traditional non-modern sites to a hub site? So the answer is yes, but the caveat of you have to establish a modern homepage on that classic site. You can do that today. You go into the pages library, create your page, which is very similar to like what you saw me doing to adjust the communication site. Create your page exactly how you want, and in the pages library, once you've published that page, is you right click and you say make it my home page. Once you do that, what it then does is it tells the service, hey, give me access to a few more things. And a big one is site information. Site information panel drops down and you'll see that ability. If you've been given per uh, the IT requirements, if you've been given permissions to be able to join a site to a certain hub, you would see it there then in the site information pane. And now a non-group connected site that you've modernized a little bit can now be a part of a hub site. It makes a lot of sense, and, and that's going to help a, a lot in terms of um, adoption. Mark, we're a bit um, uh, over time, so I'll just conclude, though. Um, uh, we will stick around afterwards just to uh, maybe uh, answer some questions over there. Um, if you're more than interested in what you just saw, um, you will want to see what our uh, award-winning internet solution has to offer. Please book a demo uh, right now. It's going to be my pleasure to be able to show you What's the role of the hub sites? What's the role of the communication sites? And how at Valo we think um, we make that. Mark, thank you so much for your time today. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, and we'd like to welcome uh, everyone for their time also. Um, there are some uh, questions pending. I will make sure that I can answer uh, all of those questions. But for the uh, others, I will wish you a, uh, an awesome uh, end to your day. And Mark, have a great one. Thank you very much. You have a great day as well. And thank you everybody to joining and any unanswered questions, certainly dive into some of the new documentation, ping me on Twitter. Uh, we shouldn't be too hard to find. We want to make sure that everything is clear and hopefully you start using and adopting some of this new technology. Work with Velo to certainly round out and add to your intranet if you're leveraging or just getting started with SharePoint. Definitely look into where they can help accelerate things. Awesome. Thank you everyone and have a great day. Bye-bye.